When someone asks you, where is your Chosan, it means where are you from, and not just like the place, but the culture behind it, the people behind it, the, the, the history behind it, all of that. So for me, that's what Senegal is. It's, it's my Chosan, it's, um, it's, it's my identity. Africa is very rich in so many ways, starting with its demographic. You know, we have such a young demographic, and in my mind, youth is richness. Also the quality of our people, we have amazing people as well. Uh, so yes, it is true, everywhere you look, it feels rich, it's because it is rich. Yet, a lot of folks in, in Africa have not been able to accomplish a form of uh, prosperity, like we could see in other parts of the world, despite offering so much to the world. So um, to me, it has been a puzzle for, the very, for a very, very long time. How do countries prosper? My name is Magat Wade, and I'm the founder of Skin is Skin. We like to say that we are born in Austin, Texas, United States, and made right here in Meke, Senegal. I never woke up one day and be like, ooh, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. No, never. And I think what happened for me is what happened to a lot of entrepreneurs, to a lot of business people. I think um, a lot of founders, all that the way they get into starting a business is they see something that sucks or they get inspired by something that's awesome and they're just like, you know what, I'm gonna bring this to the rest of the world. I was born in Senegal in uh, Mbou, which is 80 kilometers south of uh, Dakar, a little fisherman's village, you know, not too many people back in the days, raised mainly by my, my grandmother, because my um, parents, I think as soon as I was done breastfeeding, I guess, uh, that's when my parents emigrated to uh, Europe. And my grandmother was really, really good to me. My memories of her is someone who really empowered me. Do as you wish and do as your heart desires. And so I, I think I learned a lot of freedom from her. I learned to be a free spirit and a free person. It's only later that I started to realize when I was in Europe, um, seeing what surrounds you in Europe on a daily basis. And then when we would go to Senegal for vac on vacation, it's just like, you know, something is, something is strange here. You know, how come here we have this and over here we have that? So that's when I started to feel like so there's something kind of awkward and not quite balanced. Because I'm someone who really always tries to understand what's happening, it's very important for me. I started getting more interested into how do countries prosper? It has been one of my big questions. I was very interested in understanding why is it that a couple of decades ago, you know, China, for example, was at the same level as most African countries. And yet today, they completely, <laughs> I mean, they have done this. Countries like Singapore made it. Countries like Hong Kong made it. Even a, a place like Dubai, bare land of sand, des desert sand, and all of a sudden, within 12, 15 years, Dubai, one of the financial centers of the world, and you're like, uh, what? What happened here? And these are very different cultures, right? You know? So very different cultures, yet they're all able to accomplish the same type of, um, of um, growth and prosperity despite starting from very much at the bottom, right? And then you look at two countries where normally people, their people are very similar, but then very different outcomes. And I'm talking about North Korea, South Korea, Eastern Germany, Western Germany. I mean, day and night, day and night. We have similar countries that end up in a different situation, and we have very different countries that can end up in the same situation in terms of prosperity. What's going on? So please don't tell me that it has to do with the type of people. All of a sudden I'm thinking, it has nothing to do with the people. It has nothing to do with people. Something else is at play. Something else is at play. And so when you start digging into all of this, one thing that started to jump for me was how free were people to enterprise or not? Because we're talking about prosperity versus poverty. How much economic freedom does a, any country offer its citizens.
reason why these countries are poor, it's due to the fact that they are overwhelmingly overregulated. Okay, let me give you some examples. You know, I just came back from Senegal three weeks ago. I now spend half my time in Senegal, half my time here in the United States, uh, because my business, we produce our products back home. We just finished um, setting up the manufacturing facility. We make skincare products. Let me give you an example as to the type of idiocy that I'm dealing with on a daily basis there. To make these beautiful creams for you, these beautiful lip balms for you, I need the best ingredients that the world has because I happen to be a very picky person and a very proud person. If I want to show you that us Africans are as worthy as anybody else, I also need to raise my bar, right? Because of that, I need to source my products from anywhere I see them in the world where they happen to be the best. So it turns out that right now in Senegal, out of all the ingredients and packaging that goes into my Let's say the lip balm that we're launching in September. Only two ingredients for now I can get from my country because they match the standards that I'm looking for. Everything else has to come from somewhere else. And you know how that goes. We're, it's a global world, you know. We, we source from wherever we can and where we find what suits us. Well, did you know that anything that I import in my country to make my product gets a tariff of 45%? So my country's like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. That kind of sucks. So, okay, uh, you jump through these hoops, fill out all of this paperwork, do this, do this, do that, and then we will come and do all of these controls at your site and everything, and then we'll give you an exoneration for three years. And if you're being a good citizen, then maybe we'll extend it for another two years. That's what we have to do right now. Do you see the disadvantage that I have compared to a woman who is here in America and starting her business herself? One nonsense. Wow, but yeah, just wait. It's good, huh? Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, just thank you. Man, my Musa Gay, the next thing that you did to Shawan, be, voila, the next enterprise familial. Euh, c'est le grand-père en petit-fils. L'entreprise, c'est le grand-père en petit-fils. Ce que je veux dire, c'est que je veux dire 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 parce que pour nous, on a un matériel de qualité, parce que c'est ce qui est le problème. Le matériel de qualité, nous avons un ami à travers l'Europe peut-être, mais les Chinois, ils ont des marchés. Pour les produits, ils ont des marchés. Quand tu arrives à un problème, la raison du problème, de là, vous pouvez trouver des solutions que vous travaillez. Vous pouvez trouver des solutions que vous travaillez. Et c'est la solution 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 que vous travaillez. La réalité est en retard, mais la réalité manque de matériaux. Mais vous n'avez pas besoin de savoir. Vous savez que vous n'avez pas besoin de vous faire dans le marché. Parce qu'on sera obligé de rationaliser. Parce qu'on s'est dit que ce qu'on a besoin, c'est ce qu'on a besoin. Oui, parce que là, on est là. Parce que si nous n'avons pas besoin de les enfants, nous avons besoin de nous trouver un partenaire pour que nous puissions nous accompagner. Si nous n'avons pas besoin de ça, dans l'avenir, les enfants n'ont pas besoin. To me, it's very simple. You know, people are poor because they have no money. They have no money because they have no source of income. No source of income for most of us is a job. Where do jobs come from? It comes from businesses, mainly small and medium-sized enterprises. If you have a country that doesn't make it easy for a business to be, there would be no businesses. And if there is no businesses, then there are no jobs. And if there are no jobs, people have no income. People have no income means they're poor. And as a country, you're poor. On est à Yoff, Yoff village. Oui, j'habitais, j'habitais ici avant. Ça, c'est la rue que je passais tous les jours. J'ai habité ici de, depuis 14 ans. 
Voilà, voilà la chambre que j'ai toujours habitée. Bon, j'habitais ici. J'ai habité ici pendant 5 ans. Avant, avant j'étais ailleurs, dans le quartier ici. Et ça, c'était plus grand que mon ancienne chambre. Voilà, voilà. J'habitais ici avec mes cinq enfants. And I used to live Donc, here with euh, my five children. je dormais ici And avec ma femme. Les, les enfants aussi dormaient ici. So he used to sleep here ouais. with his wife and maybe the baby. And at night, the kids, you know, they would lay stuff on the floor and sleep on the floor. Voilà. Ça, ce sont des temps. <rire> C'est l'activité la, principale des pêcheurs ici. C'est ça. Bon, Magat, je l'ai connu, c'est le hasard qui fait qu'on qu s'est connu. On s'est connu donc il y a de cela huit ans. Donc c'est une longue histoire, hein, parce que Magat, je l'ai connu, ça fait, je vous l'ai dit tout de suite, ça fait huit ans. Bon, ça fait à peu près, ça fait quatre mois, trois, quatre mois. Bon, ça fait trois mois aussi. Ouais, ça fait trois mois que j'avais ici. Je suis, je suis ici à Mehé, à Ngaï Mehé. Donc, euh, dans cette maison, dans cette maison qu'on m'a louée, vous me louez depuis Yagoul. It's just a beautiful human story. You know, the people that I value in my life, you realize that it's nothing about money. There is no, it's not about money. It's about their how rich they are. And um, he's just um, an amazing man. Euh, en Afrique, les gens, c'est pas parce que les gens ne veulent pas travailler, mais ils ne voient pas de travail. Un avenir meilleur, que, que tout soit à l'école, à instruire, et avoir son métier et gagner sa vie honnêtement. Him and his family, yes, they do matter a great deal to me. Uh, you don't choose your family, but you choose your friends. And in my case, I like to say that with him, I was very blessed to be able to choose my family, actually. Ouais, ce que je voudrais dire, c'est de lancer un message au monde entier. Parce que c'est tellement dur que quand on regarde l'Afrique, on le regarde pour un, un continent pauvre, fatigué. Or qu'il y a des gens intelligents qui veulent travailler, qui veulent bien gagner leur vie. Mais chaque fois, euh, ce que je déplore, déplore le plus, c'est nos élites. C'est ce qui, qui sont en haut de nous et qui, qui semblent nous aider et qui ne, qui ne sont pas en réalité. The way a country offers its citizens um, economic freedom is through its set of um, legal infrastructure most of the time. It's uh, through telling them, yes, I want you to create. And because I want you to create, I'm going to make it easy for you to create. I'm going to make it easy for you to create companies. I'm going to make it easy for you to associate with uh, your employees and or your business partners. We're going to make it easy for you to create. If you look at the Doing Business Index ranking only, you will see that it is harder to do business anywhere in Sub-Saharan Africa than it is in any Scandinavian country. It is easier for anyone in any part of Scandinavia to start and run a business than it is for almost anyone in Sub-Saharan Africa. And then you ask me, why? Why, despite its richness, its, 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 its mind-blowing richness, why is it that its people do not seem like they're living the prosperity that they should be living given, given how rich they are? I'm going to go to Maria. 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 Si 
Je Mayor is this amazing man who has left a very comfortable life behind to come and see what he could do for his city and for his country and beyond that for his continent. And for that, I have the highest, the utmost respect. I'm very committed to work with my population. I am very committed to use Mecca as a showcase. I'm very committed to add something special, innovative, in the context of promoting development in Senegal. Magat is also in Meke since uh, uh, 2014. Yeah, it was not easy to get uh, an entrepreneur uh, from Africa, established in US, succeeding in the international area, coming back in Senegal, in the rural area, and trying to develop something. The real challenge is being able to be in a rural area where people are not well educated in business and in implementing a successful project. And today we are very proud to get first products of skins and uh, skins, she corrected me all the time, and we are ready to provide more, uh, more land, more uh, support to get this uh, company be among the biggest in the world, but with the name one day, the story will say that it was from Mecca. I'm very proud and uh, happy to be working hand in hand with him. And I must say, him and his wife and his community have made it so, so um, enjoy, you know, joyful uh, for me to be here and to do what I do. So um, they have become you know, another part of my uh, community here. For job creation, we need to promote women entrepreneurs. If you educate a woman, you are educating a nation. It's why they have to get access to education, to resources, and uh, to know also, to involve in uh, policy making. But sometimes you can't change the world in one click. You ha we have to adapt and to change the mindset. People tend to think that I'm against NGOs. I am against the NGOs that um, give people fish, right? And they all tell you, oh no, it's better, yeah, we know, it's better to teach someone to, uh, to fish than to give them a fish. But I am emphatically against, um, you know, NGOs that give people a fish. What if I started a shoe company and every time I sold a pair of shoes, I gave a pair away. And that way, if as long as I continue to keep selling shoes, these kids will have shoes for the rest of their life.
Il y a les produits de riz Je suis à Dakar. Il y a une certaine entreprise qui a fait des choses gratuitement à travers les écoles. Parce que déjà, ce que nous avons fait, nous de Dakar pour commander des choses. Nous avons fait des choses qui sont très bien. Nous avons fait des choses qui sont très bien. gratuites pour nous. Nous avons fait des choses parce que déjà, ce que nous avons fait, c'est gratuit. Donc, nous avons fait des choses qui sont très bien. Nous avons fait des choses qui sont très bien. Nous avons affaire aux Chinois qui ont eu mais la femme bénisse en dumping oui un petit tibir bon hamni ni tu m'as ni quoi comprendre mais nous ni les capi d'un coup d'un coup d'un coup ils l'ont l'ont nous défendu l'ont l'ont on a on a on a proposé aï aï plan aux autorités pour régler ce problème parce que d'un ni allez ils veulent avoir un uniforme nous à mec et moi-même j'ai proposé cela pour habiller les 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 écoles pendant une fête bon suivant un plan de, de, de financement. You know. Donc, quand on a fait ça, 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 c'est pour dire que la société est là pour nous. Nous sommes là pour nous pour nous donner gratuitement les écoles de Dakar. Nous devons nous dire que ce n'est pas grave. Nous devons travailler avec les filles du Sénégal. Nous devons nous donner un peu de temps. Si vous voulez faire un non-profit, vous pouvez juste essayer de vous demander de vous demander si je fais ou je supporte un NGO qui aide les gens à être productifs. poverty mean for me, Magat Wade, from Senegal. Poverty in my case, the poverty of my people means that we have countless, countless young people, some of my most entrepreneurial people who are right now serving as fish food at the bottom of the ocean. Just two weeks ago, we had a boat tip over somewhere in the Mediterranean. And you hear about these stories, you see these pictures. I grew up with the stories of people dying at sea. Why? Because they had to leave their country because there is not enough jobs. And why there is not enough jobs? Because the business climate sucks so much that people like me can't do their work of creating companies and jobs. So they packed themselves into little fishermen's boat, tried to cross to make it to Europe to find a job so they can feed their families back home. Most of them don't make it. Just two weeks ago, again, another boat. Babies in it. Babies. Je suis Madame Yaïba M. Diouf. J'habite dans un village qui s'appelle Tiaraï-sur-Mer. Oui, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, nous sommes un village de pêcheurs. La pêche est l'activité économique de la communauté, mais aussi, vous savez, nos gouvernements ont signé des, des accords de pêche avec l'Union européenne. Et vous voyez ici, dans la mer, où nous vivions principalement, il y a des bateaux qui ont pillé notre stock de poissons. Mon fils, il s'appelait Alunmar. Il avait 27 ans. Et c'était un bon pêcheur. Il faisait partie des meilleurs pêcheurs de la communauté. Et vous savez, ici, au mois de mars, on n'a pas de poisson. Ils, ils étaient partis en Mauritanie pour une campagne de pêche de 4 mois. Quand ils rentraient, ils amenaient beaucoup d'argent pour la famille. Mais c'était en 2007, ils sont partis en Mauritanie, à Noadibou. Ils n'ont pas eu de poisson. Et ils se sont dit, on peut aller en Europe pour encore avoir du travail. Et ce cette qui sont partis, voulant partir en Europe, et ils sont disparus au large de la Méditerranée. Sur notre, sur notre calcul, en tant qu'association, on a eu presque 
1450 jeunes qui sont disparus dans notre communauté. The day that I sat down with her and I heard the story from her of all of these young people who went at sea in Charoy sur mer and her explaining the stories of how her own son passed away and how to this day she yet has to see her, his body because obviously decomposed at the bottom of the ocean and how they had to do this mass you know, burial in Spain and with nobodies, I guess. But, um, You know, I looked at this woman and I'm just like, there's got to be something that people like me have to do. And that's when I guess I became very resolved in understanding the, the mechanics behind why some countries are poor and others are rich. That's when I became really, really motivated to understand. Pour qu'on ait un pays où tous les jeunes aient accès à une éducation formelle, où que tous les jeunes, après l'éducation, aient un emploi décent, digne, pour rester au pays. It's, it's just, it seems so simple to me, And yet, so few people just stop for a second to think about it. And that, to me, is the irony of today. And you would think that these ideas should be mainstream, and they're not. And it drives me nuts. Nuts. I have people who sit out there and tell me that they would love to see me prosper. They would love to see my countries prosper. They are sick and tired of seeing babies dying, you know, child mortality. They tell me that they don't want um, to see some of my young people dying at sea on their journey to go finding a job. They tell me that they don't, uh, that they'd see me as an equal, that they would like for me to prosper just like anybody else. But I hear the same thing from the same people who the minute you address the fact that business is the solution, then they start running for the hills. Because you know what? Their anti-business philosophy and attitude is much stronger than supposedly, in this case, I would like to say, maybe their love for me or their care for me. So you tell me which it is, because you can't tell me that you care about me and you care about the rest of the, but you care about the global poor, yet you look down and you have no respect and no, uh, no consideration for the most basic tool that exists, that we know of, and it has proven itself time and time and time again. Entrepreneurial value creation is the way out, is a way from poverty to prosperity for individuals and countries.